there's nothing quite like being daddy's little girl. I'll take care of her, I mean, sure, why not? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 father and daughter movies. I want you to be happy, that's all. For this list, we're looking at films that feature memorable and sometimes complicated father-daughter relationships. You gave us back! I know, I know, and it is the worst mistake I ever made! And while being a father to a little girl might not be vastly different than a little boy, it can occasionally come with its own unique set of challenges. When those challenges are put through the Hollywood filter, well, that's when the drama ensues. All right, all right, let me get this straight. So you guys are a thing. You guys are a couple, right? You guys are together? Yeah, yes. No way. Break up right now. Daddy? Please don't call him that. Number 10, The Game Plan. My name is Peyton. I'm your daughter. Audiences may have grown accustomed to seeing Dwayne The Rock Johnson playing the charismatic meathead who could bust a few skulls and still crack a megawatt smile. Yeah, they're going crazy! <sighs> crazy. But in this 2007 Disney comedy, he plays a football player suddenly thrust into the role of full-time father when his estranged eight-year-old daughter appears on his doorstep. <laughs> Joe, looks like you got a rogue fan. I'm not a fan, I'm Joe's daughter. What's everybody staring at? Johnson's character evolves from a self-centered athlete to a man who can't live without his little girl. We're gonna go out on the stage and we're gonna dance our tutus off. And isn't that what fatherhood is all about? I love you, Daddy. I wanna come home. I love you too, babe. I love you so much. Number nine, Hannah. You're dead. Right now. I've killed you. Some dads prepare their daughters for the world by telling them about the birds and the bees. Use your hands. Others train them to be highly lethal assassins who can murder at the drop of a dime. In this 2011 thriller, Eric Bana plays a former CIA operative who raises his 15-year-old daughter to be an efficient killing machine with one mission in mind, destroy their enemies. Tell me again. Where's Vika? Then. Postcard. Then. What? The address where we meet. Willem Grimm's house, Stefanstrasse, 260, 10559, Berlin, Germany. Yeah, what else? Adapt or die. Vika on your feet. Even when I'm sleeping. After living in the Arctic for several years, the duo plans to rendezvous in Berlin and bring their adventure full circle. I'll see you there. This trip gives Hannah a brief glimpse at life as a normal teenage girl, though thanks to her father, she is clearly anything but. When are you mentally? Please tell your friend. I just wanted the keys. Hannah! Should I let him go? As opposed to what? Yes, you should let him go! Number eight, three men and a baby. <laughs> That's a baby. Oh, I know it's a baby. What's it doing there? It's sleeping. A surprise baby doesn't have to be a burden. This is your first. First what? Baby. Uh, yeah, first and the last. <laughs> Just ask Tom Selleck, Steve Gutenberg, and Ted Danson's characters in this 80s classic. It's your baby. No! It's not my baby. They play three hard partying bachelors whose lives are suddenly thrown for a loop by the introduction of a doorstep infant. I mean, for God's sake, somebody drops a baby off on, on your doorstep and you automatically assume he's mine? Look, the child doesn't look anything like me. I'm bigger and, and I have more hair. Jack Holden turns out to be an unwitting baby daddy, forcing him and his roommates to transform from womanizers into doting fathers overnight. I'm an actor, I can, uh, I can do a father. There are other complications thrown into the mix. Heroines in the diaper pail, baby wipes are in the cabinet. Like a heroin deal gone bad and the little girl's mother showing up to reclaim her. But genuine affection and sincere baby fever prevail in the end. <laughs> Number seven, crazy stupid love. No, 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 I mean our other daughter. Hello? Nana! Hi, guys. Hi, sweetheart. In this smart romantic comedy, Steve Carell plays a man trapped in a midlife crisis after discovering that his wife is having an affair. My wife is having an affair with David, David Lindhagen. As he struggles to rebuild his life in the wake of their separation, his daughter also has to adjust to being an adult and all of the complications life throws at you. That's mostly just because I was cold and wet 
I'm trying to be dramatic. One of the more pleasant complications comes in the form of Ryan Gosling's character, an irresistible playboy who also happens to be coaching her father in pickup artistry. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Their stories eventually converge, with Carell's character snapping out of his self-indulgence and into his role as a father. You stay away from my daughter! I don't even know you! Number six, Despicable Me. Okay, girls, go play. What do you do when you're a notorious villain who needs the sweet innocence of a trio of little girls to pull off your latest scheme? Well, naturally, you adopt three kids from an orphanage and hope for the best. Will you read us a bedtime story? No. In this animated hit, Steve Carell voices Gru, who initially planned on utilizing said girls to steal a shrink ray, but ends up growing attached to his new wards instead. It's like my heart has a tooth, and it's got a cavity that can only be filled with children. He slowly accepts the full trappings and joys of fatherhood, including trips to ballet recitals and reading bedtime stories all while trying to maintain his supervillain cred, of course. And once the moon is mine, and I will be the greatest villain of all time! Number five, The Descendants. I'm worried about my daughters. In this critically acclaimed comedy drama, George Clooney shakes his perpetual bachelor persona and dons that of a single father struggling to raise two daughters while his wife is in a coma. She gave you everything, man. Good, happy home, two beautiful daughters. What's your point, Scott? As Matt King, he's a lawyer and father of a rebellious teenage girl and a 10-year-old daughter with behavior problems. A real good job you're doing. In addition to the difficulties he's facing with his daughters, he must also wrestle with the knowledge of his wife's infidelity and the fact that she's not going to recover from her coma. Her coma is permanent. She's not going to make it. As he adapts to a number of issues, including some potentially lucrative acreage his family owns, Matt also has to learn how to connect with his daughters in the wake of tragedy. Number four, Dan in real life. Hey, is this yours? Dad. Didn't think so. In this comedy drama, Steve Carell yet again takes on the role of the conflicted single father, beset by the hazards of having female children. Dad, I'm 17, okay? You are so flirting. As widowed dad Dan Burns, he appears annoyingly overprotective of his three young daughters. By the way, you're grounded. Oh, I'm grounded? Yep. Mm -hmm. For how long? For life. Dad, come on! While contending with teenage romances and other family issues, he must also figure out how to navigate his feelings for his brother's girlfriend. We should probably talk about something else. So you're telling me that you're one of those widowers with three daughters? Since this is a romantic comedy and all, it's not that complicated to figure out what happens in the end. Plan to be surprised. But at the center of the film is Dan's relationship with his girls, and how that affects the decisions he makes with regards to his life and theirs. Go. Now. Oh. Number three, Trouble with the Curve. You will never touch her again. I'm gonna rip your face off. Whoa, whoa, hey, God, <laughs> Clint Eastwood trades in his curmudgeonly trainer and father figure to a rising boxing champ hat to play a curmudgeonly baseball scout and estranged father to Amy Adams' ambitious lawyer in this 2012 sports drama. Dad, give me the keys. This is my car and I drive. Give me the keys. As a senior scout for the Atlanta Braves named Gus Lobel, Eastwood is accompanied by his daughter on his latest scouting mission. Dad, I've got it. Let me no, help. That's I why I'm it. here. No, I help. got it. In spite of their strained relationship, God damn it, Dad, talk to me. His girl aids him in his quest to locate a suitable draft pick for his team, and this gives the pair the opportunity to reconcile their differences. You don't even like baseball. I love baseball. You know I love it. I never even wanted to be a lawyer. I did that for you so that you would be happy with me and that you would approve of me and then maybe you'd keep me around. Number two, Paper Moon. 
How come you're taking me? In this comedy, real-life father and daughter Ryan and Tatum O'Neill respectively play Moses Prey and Addie Loggins, an inadvertent con artist team who may or may not actually be related in the film as well. Moses is a traveling con man who happens upon Addie while attending her mother's funeral and is persuaded to deliver her to her aunt in another state. You don't like me, do you? No, I don't like you. Along the way, the two literally become partners in crime, leaving a number of hapless victims in their wake. Well, Addie Prey, I'm going to get you $24 and an extra five for just coming to my door. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. They also form a close bond that neither had anticipated, and neither wants to break. I told you I don't want you riding with me no more. You still owe me $200. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Daddy, did God mean for you to be like this? Or was it an accident? He hits him really hard, Dad. So hard. You want to talk about it? So you want me to call you Dad, or should I just call you Ethan? I think I like Dad. You're in a good mood. Well, I think I discovered who my mom is in the story. I wouldn't change anything about you. I wouldn't change one hair on your head. Not, not for anything. I love you, Dad. I love you. Number one, Father of the Bride. Father of the Bride. Mm. Can you believe it? In this remake of the 1950 classic, Steve Martin plays George Banks, a loving father caught up in the whirlwind of Wedding Bell's madness. Wait a minute. A wedding coordinator? What's a wedding coordinator? After his daughter returns from a trip overseas and announces her engagement to a man she only recently met, there's a mad dash to prepare a wedding, with George footing the ever-increasing bill. I don't tell everyone how much it costs. <clears throat> He told you, right? 250 ahead. In addition, he's struggling to accept his daughter's new beau, as well as his future extended family. I don't want to be in law, <laughs> especially the people who live in Bel Air. But none of this really compares to what is probably the most difficult aspect of his daughter's wedding, finally letting her go. <laughs> Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite father and daughter film? For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I got you.